Okay, I'm ready. Camera, Thank you. Okay, so yesterday I told you how many pictures you have to take for the project. Raise your hand if you can remember how many pictures you need to take. Jacob. Five. Five pictures. So we're going to start the project in the class resource folder. So that's the first thing I want you to write down in your notes. You're going to start in the class resource folder because we're going to do a sample. So we're going to open up the computer. Oops, that's the wrong one. We're going to go to NHS Photo, Photo 1, Class Resources. So write that down in your notes. You're going to start in the class resources. Number 14 because we're working on our number 14 hand tint project. Everybody is going to do this sample. So the sample is the first one that we're going to practice with, just like we did for the essential photo editing. You're going to do a sample, and then you're going to move on to your own work. So the first thing that we need to do for our hand tint project is open up this in Photoshop. Raise your hand if you remember how to open up an image in Photoshop. Brianna. You right-click and then go to Open with Adobe Photoshop. Good. Right-click, Open with Adobe Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we need to do in Photoshop is we, go. we need to make the picture black and white. So to do that, the first step is we need to make a duplicate background image. So the next thing I want you to write down in your notes is you're going to go to Layer at the top and then duplicate layer. Layer, duplicate layer. Here's the layers menu. Make sure that you can see this throughout the whole project. If you can't, go to the windows menu and click on the layers. So you're going to need to see the layers menu throughout the whole project. So we're going to go to layer, duplicate layer, we're going to click OK, and now I have the background and the background copy. So we're going to change the background copy to black and white. So to do that, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. So I'll give you a second to write that down. Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. What that's going to do is it's going to turn our copy black and white. So there's a certain order here in the layer menu that you need to follow to get full credit for the project. So the background layer is going to be colored, but the white or the background copy, the copy is going to be black and white. So to get it to be black and white, we're going to go to image, adjustments, hue saturation. After you click on hue saturation, you're going to pull the middle one here all the way to the left. So pull the middle of saturation all the way over to the left and it'll make it black and white. And you can see what it did from that menu. So image, adjustments, hue saturation, and then pull the saturation all the way to the left. When you're done, you're going to click OK up here. So make sure you have a colored copy and make sure that there's a black and white copy on top. So that's part of the stuff I'm going to be looking for. Any questions so far? Okay. The sample needs to have at least three colors. That's the next thing I want you to write down. The sample needs to have at least three colors. That's part of our practice. There are three colors which aren't really colors that you can't use. So you need to use three colors for the sample, but in all of your examples and all your own artwork, you cannot use, write this down, cannot use white, black, or gray. Any other colors, any other combinations we talked about yesterday for the color theory notes, go for it. But you cannot use black, white, or gray because you're changing the picture black and white. Why would you re do those steps? Hmm? Why would we change the black, white, and gray? You can't pick those colors to color on top. We're changing the picture black and white, but you can't pick those colors to color on top of your picture. Oh. Good question.
question. Any other confusion about that? You cannot pick black, white, or gray for your own colors. But here are colors you can pick. So it's important in this project that you pay attention. I keep saying this to the layers menu. The next thing you're going to write down is you're going to make a new layer. And we're going to name that layer whatever color we want to use for our paintbrush. So write this down. You're going to go to layer, new, layer. Layer, new, layer. And what that's going to do is it's going to put a layer on top. So it's always going to build upwards on the layer menu. So layer, new, layer. Raise your hand if you have a color suggestion. Any of those okay. colors? Malia. Blue. Blue. Okay. Red. We're just gonna. All we're gonna ask for two more colors. So keep your your ideas in your head for a second. Jesse, you have a question? No, I have a color. Color. Okay. Hold hold it up here. So we're gonna go to image or layers new layer, and we're gonna name this layer blue. So you're gonna name whatever color you're coloring with that layer, that color. Because you have to separate the colors. So each new color that you pick, you're going to name that layer, that color. It'll make more sense in a second. So layer, new layer, and you're going to name it, for our example, we're going to name it blue. When you're done, we're going to click OK. And see how it makes this blank copy on top? That's exactly what we want. The next thing I want you to write down in your notes is you're going to pick out the color blue that you want. So this box right here, the black and white box, double click on the top box here and it will come up with all of our color options. So it's this little box down here, the black box and the white box. Click on the top one. We're going to pick our blue. So Malia, was the blue your choice? Yes. Okay, so look up here. This is the blue that it's going to pick. Do you want it to be like a lighter blue, a darker blue? That one. That one. Oops. That one? Yes. So click OK. You can change this around if you want to go back later. We're going to click OK for now because that's the blue that Malia has in mind. The next thing you're going to write down is you're going to use the paintbrush to paint on top of your picture. So the paintbrush is right here in this menu. It looks just like a little paintbrush. Just like in the Freak of the Week, you can change the size of the brush up here. This number is going to make it bigger. So here's my, my circle. You can make it smaller. So I'm going to just start coloring over this part. Remember, zoom in, control plus, so you can see what you're doing. Minus is out. So for this project, you're going to have to get nice and close and stay inside the lines, which I'm purposely going to mess up for a second so I can show you the next step. So let's say I did a really great job and I'm just coloring this in blue. The next thing I want you to write down is we're going to make the paint blend in. So now it just looks like it's on top, but we want to make it look like it's going to blend into the picture underneath. So underneath the layer menu here, there's all of these options. Click on the one that says, which one is it? Overlay. There we go. So I'm going to undo that for a second. Edit, undo. So here are the layers menu where it says normal. Click there, and you're going to pick the one that says overlay. See what happens after you pick it? It blends in. So it doesn't just look like it's on top anymore. It blends in. So for each layer, you're going to need to change this one to overlay. So after I have done that, I notice I didn't do that great of a job staying inside of the lines. Raise your hand if you have an idea of what tool we can use to go back and clean it up. Emily. The eraser. The eraser. Yep. So you're going to go back and forth between the brush and the eraser. So I'm going to zoom in. And holding down shift, just like in the Freak of the Week, will make a really straight line to clean everything up. It's so, like clean up your room. Yeah, I wish you could use an eraser to clean up your room. That'd be cool. So you can go back later if you want to add more blue in here. The brush, you can add it back in. So you're going back and forth between those two tools. So if... Mm, Okay, I'll do that next. 
Raise your hand if you remember how to make a new layer. So we're going to pick a new color. So for each new color, you need to make a new layer. Peyton. You go to layer, new layer. Yep. Oops. Layer, new layer. Okay, so we've picked our blue. Jess, do you have a color suggestion? Pink. Okay, pink. So we're going to name the layer pink. We're going to click OK. It made the pink layer. We're going to double click here on the top box. So now it's not black. It's just going to be the top one between the two. And it'll say foreground color. So it's the foreground color. So Jesse, what kind of pink were you thinking? Like a bright pink or a soft pink? Oops, let me get a little closer. That one? Yeah, it's good. So we're going to click OK. We're going to use the brush. It's going to zoom in. Let's say I want to color this part pink. Yeah, you can, um, there's different things you can do with the brush. Like you can have different edges to the brush. You can have a different flow and opacity, but we're just kind of going to leave everything at 100% until you feel more comfortable playing around with it. So let's say, I think I did a great job here. Raise your hand if you can tell me how we're going to make the pink blend into the picture. What are we going to do to change it? Emily. Mm -hmm. Click on overlay. So now it blends in. You need to go back with the eraser. You're going to go back with the eraser. Okay. So one more layer. <coughs> we already got that one down. Layer, new, layer. What's our other color going to be? Ian? Yellow. Yellow. So we're going to name the layer yellow. So Leanne, what's your yellow vision? Lighter, darker, normal? A little bit lighter. So lighter, you're going to click over here, and it'll kind of tint and shade between the two. So is that more what you were thinking, or even lighter? Good. So I'm going to use the brush. I'm going to color over some of these. We already answered this part, so we're going to go to layers. Overlay, Ooh. and then it's going to match in there. Let's say if you look at your combination, I think these are lovely combinations because they're primary colors. Yellow, pink, we'll call that red for now, and then blue. Um, but let's say if you go back and you say, I don't really like the blue, I think I want to change it. You can double click here on the blue. And you can rename it. So let's say maybe I want to change this to green. green. Read my mind. Okay. So the important part about putting the colors on their own layers are if I turn all of these off, you can see underneath. So everything on the yellow, I'm going to turn off is on the yellow layer. I'm going to turn off everything on the pink layer. Here's the layer I want to change. I can just use the eraser. And I can just make this really big. Erase this whole thing. I'm going to turn everything back on. I'm going to pick out my green. Kind of like this one for now. Wow. Okay, I'm going to make this one smaller, brush smaller. And then I'm going to color. Yeah, on the eraser. Touche, Jesse. Okay. Be careful about that. I do that all the time. Don't be on the eraser when you think you're on the brush. And I'm going to color this in, but you guys are going to do a better job. Do not think, let's say I want to go back and say, oh, I think I want to color in more of the, the feathers yellow, but I'm on the green layer. What layer do you have to be on if you want to use Yellow. Okay, so don't get, be confused. And I, what I'm going to do when I go through and check them off is I'm going to say everything here is on the pink layer, everything here is on the green layer, everything here is on the yellow layer. Back to my thought here about adding more yellow. I got rid of the yellow color over here. If you want to go back and find the same color, 
that you found before, use the eyedropper tool. This part will be handy if you want to go back. The eyedropper tool is up here. It looks like a little science <laughs> dropper. And when you click on it and click on the color, watch what happens in the color box. It's going to pick up the same exact color. Oh, that's crazy. And then you can go back to the yellow layer, and I'm going back to my brush. Don't forget that. And then you can get the same exact yellow. So the eyedropper tool is going to let you go back and pick the color that you previously picked. So each layer, the most important part is to make sure each layer has its own color. If you go back and forth, make sure that you're on the right color layer. General questions about the sample. Three colors. So this is just for practice. The next thing you're going to write down is how to save it. So you're going to go to File, Save As. We're going to put it in our number 14 folder. So we're going to go to NHS Photo, Photo 1, First Period, My Folder, number 14. We're going to name this. Make sure you write down how to name it. No surprise. Your last name, underscore, first initial, underscore, 14, underscore, sample. So you need to save your pictures twice for this project because I want to see your Photoshop files. I want to go back and look in your layer menu and make sure that your layers are in the exact order they should be. So your order layers are going to be the background color copy, the background black and white copy, and all the colors on top of it. So we're going to leave this here as Photoshop. So you're going to save it as Photoshop, and you're going to go back and save it as JPEG when you're finished. So always save it as Photoshop. So the sample, you're going to make sure it says sample at the end. We're going to click Save. And then we're going to go back and save it again as a JPEG when you're finished. You guys spend more time on the sample, but. So it's already named. It's already in your folder up here. You can make sure by clicking up here and going through the steps. But down here, we're going to change it to JPEG. First one with the J. Save. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do with, what we're done with the sample is we're going to put in our brand new picture. So I'm going to say I'm just going to pretend like this is a picture that I took and I'm going to go through those steps again. So we're going to right click, we're going to go to open with, a, oops, open with Adobe Photoshop. So this is an original picture that I just took for the project and put into my number 14 folder. Raise your hand if you could tell me what's the first thing that we need to do to change it to black and white. Malia. First step to changing it black and white. Emily. Good. Layer, duplicate layer. We're going to click OK. Raise your hand from this point. Jacob. Image adjustment. Mm -hmm. Adjustment then for five is use saturation. You got it. What are we going to do next? Jesse. You drag the middle one all the way to the left. All the one to the left. So what are we going to do now to add color to it? What's the first thing we need to do? Peyton. Add another layer. Okay. How am I going to do that? Uh, layer, uh, new and new. Okay. Color idea suggestion. Who wants to pick this time? Brian. Red. Red. He read your mind too. <laughs> so we're going to name the layer red. So we're going to click here on the box. Brian, what red did you have in mind? Just your normal red? <coughs> Lighter, darker, closer darker. to orange? Like a dark red. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. this one? Uh, a little lighter. A little lighter. Yeah. 
Raise your hand if you can tell me what tool I'm going to use to put the color on top. Alex. The paintbrush. The paintbrush. Raise your hand if you can tell me how to zoom in to the picture. Am I going to get really close? I'm going to see some new hands. I know more people know. Leanne? Control plus. Control plus. So let's say I want to, what part do I want to color? So, so you want to color in the part of the picture, of your own picture, that you want to emphasize. So the part that you want to stand out. So I think, I'll just do this part. So you can make the brush bigger. Going to color on top of here. You can also, like I just said before, you can hold down shift. Watch this. If it's a super straight line, hold down shift and click where it ends. And it'll follow the line. So if you have like text or any line that's super straight, hold down shift and it'll connect the lines. And then I can make my brush a little bit bigger down here. Oops, I went outside the lines. <laughs> to do a really great job, just kidding, to fill in this part. Raise your hand if you can tell me how I'm going to get the paint here to blend in with the picture. <laughs> Peyton. You go to that menu where it says normal on the layer menu, mm -hmm. and you go to overlay. Overlay. There we go. So I'm going to go back and say, oops. I didn't, or you can go back with the brush here too and fill in the parts that you missed, but I didn't really do a great job here. So I'm going to use the eraser to make that nice and straight. So you guys are going to spend a lot of time being as detailed as you can with your brush. Oops. And if you want to undo anything, edit, undo. You can go back to the brush and add more. Do not color. This part's sad. Let's say if you forgot to add the new layer and you just start painting away on here. Oh, I want to paint this part on the picture. And then I'm going to erase it. You're going to erase through the whole picture and underneath, got rid of the picture underneath. So don't, after you change the picture to black and white, don't change anything underneath it. So I'm gonna go back to history. So you said I've forgotten then what else? Undo that. Um, my point there, Jacob, was when you're erasing, make sure that you're on the right layer or else right. you're gonna erase the picture underneath. So if you wanna erase the red color, make sure that you're on the red layer. Okay. Or else it's going to erase the picture underneath, which you don't want it to. All right. So the layers, again, are going to be the color underneath, the black and white on top, and each color on top of that named the color. Peyton? Why do you not want to change the original, uh, the bottom layer? The because I want to be able to see what it looked like before. Okay. So I'm going to go back and say... You know, like, did you pick the color that originally was? Did you make it a weird color? I just want to see what the picture looked like before you altered it. Do we ask your points for creativity? It's super creative. you got to impress me. Okay, so here's the last thing I want to share. You're going to go to edit, or no, sorry, file, save as. File, save as. You're going to make sure that it's in your number 14 folder. So here we have my 14 folder. We're going to name it 14 underscore. How many colors did I add to this one? One. one. So I'm going to number this picture one at the end. If it has two colors, I'm going to name it two at the end. If it has three colors, I'm going to name it three at the end. So up here on the board, I have the combinations written down. So we're going to save it first as what type of file? Photoshop. I'm going to go back and save it as what type of file? JPEG. JPEG. So I want the Photoshop file so I can go back and look through your layers menu, but I want you to have the JPEG because it's easier for you to put into your critique and it's easier for me to put in the slideshow. So file, save as, you're saving twice. I'm going to click here on JPEG, we're going to hit save. Delete this one. Okay. 
So when you're done, you should be able to see the Photoshop file for each one and the finished one for each one. So if you can't see both of them, something's wrong. So let's do a little bit of math here. If I have five pictures that I'm going to save twice, that's 10, plus one each for the sample, so that's 12. So at the end of the project, you're going to turn in 12 files. You should be a math teacher. Oh, no. No, I should not. Mm -hmm. I'm, the I'm not good at math. I am. My dad is as well. Yeah. So the next thing I want you to write down when you have all 12 of your files is you're going to make a new folder. Projects that have multiple files, you're going to make a new folder within here. So you're going to make a new folder just like we talked about yesterday. Right click, new folder. We're going to name this one your last name, underscore initial, underscore 14. And then you're going to drag all 12 files into your folder here. So make sure that you turn in the sample JPEG, the sample Photoshop, the JPEG one, Photoshop one, then you have Photoshop and JPEG two, three, four, and five. So on the fifth one, if you want to add more than five colors, you can do that too. It doesn't have to be just five. It has to be at least five. So when you're done, you're going to copy this whole folder. We're going to go back to the inbox. We're going to... Open up the hand tent folder, we're going to right click and we're going to paste. So I just want to see everybody's folder in here. I don't want to see 12 individual files times 36 kids in the inbox, that would be madness. So you're going to turn in your folder and like always you'll be able to see your name up here when you're done. So five pictures, each one has a new color, each one needs a new layer, you're going to save each one twice, you're going to start with this sample. When you're done with this sample, Let's leave this up here so you can write down where it's needed. When you're done with this sample, call me over and I'll make sure that you guys set it up right because I don't want you to start out with the wrong combination in the layers menu. Any questions? If you guys want to check out a camera today, come back after school because second and sixth period need to use the cameras during class, which you guys will have the option to do. I guess we don't really have too much more time. What time is it? Uh, it's 8.48. Okay, I can't quite get the clocks right, but um, I want you guys to start tomorrow on the sample. So tomorrow's Thursday, Thursday right? Yeah, it's block day. Okay, so tomorrow's a block day. So tomorrow I want everybody to get on the computer, start the sample. When is due? It will be due next Thursday after the block. So you have a week to work on it. Any questions? Okay. You guys can use the rest of the class to 